Well, you guys, got another video here for you. When do you need to reinstall Windows? I get asked this question quite a bit, and I also see a lot of people frightened to reinstall Windows because they don't want to have to reinstall all their software and everything else. So we'll go through it in this video, and I'll give you some of the reasons when to reinstall Windows. So first off, the first one is you should reinstall Windows when upgrading to a new version of Windows. I see this so many times where people don't want to, uh, you know, back up their data and reinstall Windows. So they continue to keep upgrading. And eventually what happens is you end up with a lot of problems. So in all my years of experience, performing an upgrade install can result in a variety of different issues. So what I would advise people do is to back up your data and reinstall Windows. So for instance, if you have got Windows 10 and you are looking to upgrade to Windows 11, you can just literally back up your data and download the ISO file and reinstall Windows 11 and you will automatically be upgraded and updated and activated to that latest version if you was running Windows 10. It's the best way to go instead of using the upgrade process because this can cause problems and you can always end up losing data. Yes, you get the option to roll back, in my experience, it does cause a lot of issues. So the next option is if your system has loads of errors or problems with it, which you can't resolve. Over the course of years, I've seen so many people getting loads of errors on their PC and they are literally frightened to reinstall Windows. They don't want to do it and they will try to fix uh, these problems and end up breaking it even further. Another thing I see is people that will end up with one problem and they ignore it and they continue to use Windows and it will just end up having loads and loads of different issues. And you may try loads of scenarios on the internet and try to fix it yourself. And eventually you're just gonna make it 10 times worse in my opinion. There comes a point where you have to evaluate the situation and sort of say to yourself, I can't resolve this issue. I've tried numerous different places. You've either got a couple of options. You can either take it to a repair shop and they're probably just going to back your data up, charge you for it, and then reinstall Windows. A lot of PC repair shops do this. They won't sit there for multiple hours trying to resolve issues on your computer. They'll just basically back up your data and reinstall it and then charge you for the privilege. Now, if you're not very tech savvy and you're having issues with your computer, there's two things you have to remember. It's either a software issue or it's a hardware issue. Software, we class as, for instance, drivers, programs you've installed, malware, or maybe operating system issues. Hardware is obviously your graphics card, CPU, RAM, and so on. So the best way to quickly resolve this is to reinstall Windows. If your problem goes away, then it was a software issue. If your problem still exists after you've reinstalled Windows, then you have a hardware issue and you'll need to troubleshoot and diagnose it and find out what piece of hardware is going bad. This is the quickest and easiest way to quickly troubleshoot uh, an issue if you're not very tech savvy. And remember, sometimes no matter how good of a technician you are, sometimes you just need to do a clean install of Windows to resolve a problem because the problem is just too difficult to resolve or unfixable. So next up is when your computer is heavily infected with hard to remove malware and it's persistent malware that you just cannot remove and you've tried just about every piece of software uh, to remove it and you physically uh, try to remove it manually and it just won't let you remove it. And that you can try many different uh, resources on the internet, but if you've tried a load of different programs and you cannot remove it, I would suggest that you just reinstall Windows. And the reason for this is because you have no idea of what that malware is or what type of virus you have on your system. Now, thankfully, uh, Windows 10 and Windows 11 are a lot more difficult to infect nowadays, and you don't see so many heavily infected PCs like you used to when it was Windows 7 and previous generations of Windows. Microsoft have really upped their game when it comes to uh, protection, when it comes to malware. Now, ransomware is a different kettle of fish. Once you get this on your system, it's going to encrypt all of your data. And if you don't have backups of that data, it will all be encrypted and you'll be held to ransom and asked to pay a fee to get your data unencrypted. 
by the criminal who has encrypted your data. Never ever pay for these ransoms. It just entices them to make more of these things. And again, ransomware is on the up in 2021 and it's very, very difficult to stop them. Uh, there is software out there you can use to block uh, ransomware uh, again, but more security added on your system will start to slow things up. So just be a bit more mindful. How do you get infected? It's pretty simple. A lot of people don't use common sense. They will download uh, legal software off the internet uh, and it's paid software and they'll download it and install it and run cracks and, and other key gens and things like that or scripts they find online and it will end up getting them infected and put rootkits on their system, ransomware, uh, malware, backdoors, all sorts of stuff. And you have to really be a bit more mindful about what you're clicking on on the internet in your emails. Don't click on any sort of links in your emails and just be a bit more dubious about uh, accepting files from people and saying, run this file. If you don't know what it is, don't install it. You can only get infected if you install things on your computer or if you go to a, a breached website which has malicious code on it. You just have to be a bit more mindful, okay? Anyway, malware is another cause of reinstalling Windows, and that's what I would suggest people do just to be safe and then change all your passwords at your bank. Okay, this next one is a biggie because I see a lot of people doing it, and that is I would suggest you keep Windows as default as possible to avoid any sort of problems. The trouble is a lot of people will get paranoid about telemetry and about privacy concerns, and they go out and start running all sorts of programs, scripts, and uh, tweaks, and then they'll go and run some customizations and other things like that, and they have no clue of what they're doing. And of course, what will happen is it will end up breaking their operating system. And of course, guess who gets the blame? There's good old Bill Gates who gets the blame for everything because they say Windows 10 is a pile of junk because uh, it just doesn't work. And it's because you've been running a bunch of scripts that are removing key components from Windows, maybe, maybe Cortana or something like that. And you're physically removing something there and it's going to cause a lot of issues. And all this is because someone has told them they can get loads more frames per second. They get less processing in the background and services and things like this. And it ends up just breaking their operating system. And people believe just about anything on the internet. And this is what's happening on YouTube at the moment. People posting up uh, fake stuff about how you can go from 10 frames per second to 150 frames per second by running a bunch of these tweaks. And it's just not possible. So if you're going to run scripts like these, you have to understand what it's actually doing and always have a read about what it's actually doing and whether it's reversible. If it's not reversible, then don't run it because if you want to go back to installing something and you just can't because it's been physically removed, you're going to have to reinstall Windows. So just be a bit careful with what you're running on your system. Now, I always say to people, what are you trying to achieve with your system? If you've got an older PC, I can understand people want to try to take away uh, some of the bloat from Windows to try and get back some resources. I can understand that. But new computers, you don't really need to be worrying about this sort of stuff. Now, another big concern with people is the privacy and the telemetry and data collecting. And again, really everywhere you go, data is being collected, no matter where you are, whether it be on Facebook, YouTube, whether it be on Windows, it's all being collected and your mobile phone is giving out information all the time. So bear that in mind, really. There's no way of stopping it. The only way to stop it is go off grid. So next up, we're going to be talking about the next one is doing regular computer maintenance. This is doing things like setting up a backup plan so you can back up your data on a regular basis. You should be using a 321 backup strategy which is basically having at least three copies of your data, two of which will be uh, locally stored, but on different uh, mediums. And at least one of them should be off site. So whichever way you choose to do it, you should have at least two locally in two different mediums or two different drives and then one off site. That will be your best backup plan policy. The other thing will be removing any sort of old programs that you're not using. You can uninstall these in the uninstall section of your computer. Just uninstall a load of this stuff. I see so many people 
keeping programs they're not even using anymore it just takes up space and also just clogs up the system so you can uninstall all of these from the computer and also what another thing you want to do is run regular cleanups on your computer maybe once a month to remove any sort of temporary files from your browsing history and things like that it just keeps things running nice and smoothly and remove any sort of junkware from your computer and there's a built-in one inside windows inside here called storage sense and it will run in the background and remove any sort of junk from your computer on a regular basis and maybe uh, start considering archiving some of that data that you're not even using anymore and put that into your backup uh, plan so you've got it all nice and safe and maybe even consider getting all your games put onto another drive so you can keep them all in one location and free up some space on your PC. And also don't use any sort of registry cleaners or uh, you know driver updating programs. You don't need any of those in 2021. They can just damage your operating system and cause problems. So let's move on to the last one. Don't rush to update Windows right away. See so many people doing this and causing themselves headaches and problems when Microsoft roll out a buggy update and you end up having to roll back or it causes problems on your computer. You're in no immediate danger if you don't update right away. You should leave it at least uh, you know, two to three weeks before you even consider rolling out an update and that way you don't have any major problems with your computer if you're rolling out updates straight away. Now it's important that you don't fall too far behind with the version updates or feature updates that Microsoft offer. And the reason for this is because if you fall too far behind, what can happen is you will not receive any more security updates. Microsoft will cease uh, updates for that because it will become end of life. And another thing what will happen is when you upgrade to the next version, you could have problems because you fell too far behind. And then during the upgrade process or update process, you may have issues or errors that you can't resolve and then you'll have to do a fresh install. Always try to stay within at least one of the latest version of Windows and that way you're not going to have any major issues. But if you want to keep with the latest version of uh, Windows, you can always stay with a few uh, weeks of updates as they roll them out. And that's probably the best policy right there. And finally, the last one is only install the software that you use and be very careful with the software that you install and where you get it from. Only get it from a reliable source. So if you're not using all of the software that you're downloading, what's the point of having it installed on your system, taking up valuable space on your hard drive? Anyway, I think that's going to be about it for this video. So I hope this video has been some sort of use to you. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a big shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. Your names are rolling up on the screen right now. And I shall see you again for another video real soon. Thanks again for watching and thanks for your continued support. Bye for now.